This video is all about the best way to increase your visibility on Amazon, and that's gonna be by using Amazon ads, specifically Amazon sponsored brands ads. My personal favorite type of Amazon ad, if anybody was curious. So today I wanna talk about why you should be using sponsored brands ads on Amazon, the different types of sponsored brands ads, and then of course my personal specific type of sponsored brands ad, which you've heard me reference before, shout out to the subscribers, and that would be the sponsored brands video ads. I'm actually gonna walk you through step-by-step step how to set one up in this video as well, and we're gonna reference the previous video I did where I walked you through how to use the Amazon Video Builder to take one of your products and create a custom video from the product listing, basically, about as easy as it could be. It only took a few minutes to do, so we're gonna grab one of those videos and work it into a sponsored brand's video ad today. So follow along, we're gonna create some engaging ads that are prominently displayed across Amazon to help increase our brand awareness and hopefully, of course, lead to some sales. So let's get started. In order to use sponsored brands ads, you need to be in Amazon's brand registry. The easiest way to do this is to go to their IP accelerator and hire somebody from their service provider network to file the trademark for your brand. When you go this route, it only takes about two weeks from my experience to get into brand registry as opposed to filing for the trademark yourself, which can take nine months or longer. Now that we've taken care of brand registry, jump on over to your Amazon sponsored ads campaign manager and select sponsored brands. Now we can create our sponsored brands video ad. The first thing I'm gonna do is set a campaign name. I usually like to use prefixes based on the ad type. So the first thing I would do is type SB because it's a sponsored brands ad. There are of course other types of ads you can run on Amazon. Then I'm gonna do a dash and I'm gonna say video because this is gonna be a video ad. And then I will put the ASIN of the product that I'm going to advertise. Now you can do this any way you want. There's no right or wrong way to do it. I've just found that adding that prefix helps sort them and search for specific ad types as you create more campaigns over time. So the start date I will leave as today. End date, I'm gonna leave no end date. Uh, budget, I might increase. I mean, I'm pretty comfortable advertising. I might increase it to like $20 a day. That's a very arbitrary data point though. It's gonna vary from person to person. So don't feel like you have to uh, switch that around. Uh, in terms of brand, you can just leave that you'll be able to switch it uh, later when it comes to adding products. In terms of defining a goal, so you can either drive page visits, which if I had to guess, is gonna be the most popular option. It's also the default option. And that is where you're gonna pay per click. Every time someone clicks your ad, it takes them to a product detail page or a landing page, depending on how you configure it, and they can purchase the product. Alternatively, you can select grow brand impression share and you will pay a fee based on every 1,000 viewable impressions that it gets on Amazon in the various places your ad will be served. It'll also be eligible to be served at the top of search. So I'm gonna leave it at drive page visits and kind of optimize for conversions. Now the next section is bidding and Amazon wants to automate the bidding process. Now if you click the little um, info icon you can actually have this little pop out here on the side of the screen and it will answer most of the common questions that you'll probably have as you go through this process. Uh, I just wanted to point out that with automated bidding, Amazon will never increase your bid, okay? So it's pretty safe in my opinion to just leave the automated bidding on. If you wanna turn that off, it gives you a little bit more control when it comes to adjusting your bids for placements other than at the top of search. Of course, the top of search is where you're going to pay the most because it is the most valuable real estate on Amazon. It's gonna get the most impressions, right? Now, when it comes to naming the ad group, I typically, if I'm being honest, will just bring the campaign name down and paste it. So SB Video ASIN. And then if I want to, I can also split up my ad groups, which remember, they're the child of your campaigns by the match type of the keywords I provide. So if I'm gonna do an exact match ad group, I would say exact. And then if I wanna do a phrase match ad group, I would do phrase, et cetera, et cetera. There's no right or wrong way to do this. It depends on how granular you want to get. So I'm gonna leave it at exact for this example. And next we get to choose the sponsored brands ad format. 
Now I wanted to briefly mention that you can do product collection ads, you can do store spotlight ads, or you can do video ads, which is what we're going to do. The store spotlight will drive traffic directly to your store, including sub pages. So you need at least four store pages in order to set up those types of ads. Uh, again, if you want more information, by the way, you can click the little infographic. And of course, here on the sidebar, it will give you more information on each different ad type, including where those ads can be served. Um, by the way, the product collection and store spotlight ads can be served at the very top of search results. So you should consider running them. The product collection ads, those I've been very successful with in the past um, because I didn't necessarily have a store set up for a lot of my print on demand products, but I was able to run uh, what was formerly called headline search ads. They've been renamed a few times. Now we call them product collection ads. They show up at the very top of search, even above the other sponsored product ads. So also a big fan of uh, the product collection ads. Just wanted to be clear about that based on my experience. But for this video, we're going to click video ad, as I mentioned before, and then we need to add our products. So I'm going to go ahead and type the ASIN in for the product that we want to advertise. And I'm going to click the add button. So you can see on the right hand side that we have added it depending on the type of ad that you're setting up, you may need to add more products. For instance, I mentioned the product collection ads right here. Those will require at least three products from the same brand in order for the ad to run. Scrolling down, you have targeting. You can do product targeting where you specify uh, products on Amazon that are not yours that you would like your ad to be shown on, or you can do keyword targeting, which I am, I've set up the most stuff, let's just say. I've definitely set up mostly keyword targeting ads. So I will leave it defaulted to keyword targeting. Now here you can see we need to provide keywords. Amazon's great about giving us suggestions based on what it sees in our listing and based on uh, sales history. So that's definitely a good place to start right here in the left column. You can actually just click add all. Okay, now the one thing I was going to mention, remember when we named our ad group and we said that we can actually break this down and get very granular based on match type. So what I will do is I will follow that example that I set. I'm gonna uncheck broad, I'm gonna uncheck phrase, and now you see that it has filtered out the broad and phrase match there for those suggested keywords. And there is an add all button. This will add only exact match, okay? Which is based on the naming convention I used for this ad group. I said exact match. I could click add all, but first I want to switch the bid drop down from suggested to custom, okay? Now Amazon actually gives us a suggested bid column right here based on actual data of what people who are selling this product are bidding. So when you use a custom bid, it is not usually the most efficient way or most effective way unless you wanna really come in high or come in super low. Okay, if you come in low, you're gonna to wanna to measure the impressions generated and that's gonna vary on a uh, keyword to keyword basis, right? Because some keywords are gonna be cheap, some keywords are gonna be more expensive. Um, that's just the nature of the game. I wanted to show you that custom bid is available here, but if we use suggested bid, Again, it's going to vary our bids based on real data. So that's a good place to start. I'm gonna go ahead and click add all. And now you can see we already have, what is that? Probably at least 30 keywords. Actually, whoa, definitely more than 30 keywords. Um, depending on the product you're selling, there may be a lot, there may be a little, okay? And if you've created a new product that doesn't have a lot of uh, data, you know, in Amazon's database about the product, it's probably gonna be harder to get um, this level of data for your ads. Now, having a lot of keywords also is not necessarily the best thing. So you might wanna go through here and remove keywords that you don't think are as relevant because if they get clicked, you're gonna to have to pay, right? And if they're less relevant, they're less likely to convert. All things worth considering. Uh, so definitely spend some time here. Oh, I just realized 202 is the number of keywords that it added. So I would definitely go through here and filter it out, filter it out and try to keep the best ones. You can also skip using the Amazon suggested keywords and just write a list out of your own preferred keywords that you wanna spend your money on. Next, we're gonna scroll down here to negative keyword targeting. Okay, so this is a garlic press. If we wanted to filter out a specific keyword that has nothing to do with what we're selling, like maybe people get it confused with ginger and it's not really gonna be useful for people that are using ginger then we could put the word ginger here, change this to negative phrase so that any search query 
that includes the word ginger, our ad would not show up, okay? Because we know that anybody searching for that is not gonna purchase our product. That was just an example. And then you click add keywords, okay? And now it's time to finish up so you can name your video ad. This is it for internal use. You can call it whatever you want. I might just call it like garlic press 001. If I made another video ad, maybe for split testing, I'd call it 002. When it comes to the creative, now you can upload your ad video if you wanna make your own. Of course, you can also use the Amazon ads video builder if you guys missed that, I will link to my previous video right here in the YouTube cards so you can go check that out. I'm actually gonna click choose from creative assets and I'm gonna select the video I made from the video builder right here, click apply. And that's really it. I mean, they really are making this about as easy as it could possibly be, especially with that video builder. So you can see a preview of the video that I made in the video builder here. This is what they're gonna see in the search results based on what they searched for when our video ad is served. And this is gonna hopefully lead to an increase in sales for our garlic press. So that just about does it for this Amazon sponsored brands video ad tutorial. It's one of the most effective ways to advertise on Amazon and a personal favorite of mine. Hopefully you can see why. If you guys wanna learn more, again, I'm gonna drop links in the description so you can go check it out and try it for yourself. Thank you for watching. Please drop a like on the video if this helped you out. Subscribe if you're not already and I will see you soon with a new video.